Hello you wonderful people! Welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to give you my top 10 tips of traveling with dogs in a van through Europe. Hello and welcome! I'm Kim and together with my dogs Bobby and Bilou I live in my self-built camper van and we are getting ready to travel Europe together. Come along as we say yes to new van ventures! Tip number one Research the rules for dogs before entering the country. It's very important to research the rules of the country for entering with dogs before you enter. In most European countries, your dog needs to be microchipped and you need to carry the pet passport with you. In this passport, there can be mandatory vaccinations. For a lot of European countries, this also means a mandatory rabies vaccination. A dog's first rabies vaccination needs to be given a certain amount of days before entering the country. To my knowledge, this is 21 days, so it's really important for you to take care of this in advance. If you want to go to Sweden or Norway, dogs need to have had a tapeworm pill in a certain amount of hours before they enter the country. If these things aren't in order when you enter the country, or you cannot show in your passport that they are in order when you enter the country, it can have serious consequences, such as your dog being confiscated, put into quarantine for a certain amount of hours, or actually be euthanized, which are things you do not want to happen. Tip number two, design your van with extra storage in mind. Having pets with you in the van takes up a lot of space. For instance, in my van, I have a little dog house, they have their dog beds, they have their food, they eat kibble, so I bring along enough kibble for the trip that we're on. Now I have small dogs, so I only carry around two bags of 10 kilograms of kibble. But if you have a bigger dog, you might need to carry around a lot more kibble than that. Here you can see everything I carry for the dogs on display, including a stroller, kibble, treats, blankets, life vest, cold packs, leashes, toys, dog beds, car seat, and a basket filled with worm tablets, resto collars, toothpaste, more toothpaste, ointment, nail clippers, hair clippers, toothbrushes, tick grabbers, and flea combs. Tip number three, clean more often because things will get dirty. The van gets smelly <laughs> and dirty. And this is because dogs drag stuff in here in their fur. For instance, if it's wet and they shake when they're in the van, everything gets flashes on them. So it's a good thing to take care of cleaning the van often and maybe carrying a vacuum. When the dogs get wet in the van, this also means the humidity goes up in the van. So you might need to use your heater more often. Tip number four, protect them from diseases. Different countries carry different dog diseases. For instance, which is a big thing for me, we have in certain areas, I think more south, we have Leishmania, which is a parasite that gets carried by sand fleas. So it's super important to make sure your dog is protected and will not be infected with the Leishmania disease. It's a disease that they can keep still, but they can't really treat it so they can make it sleep. But it's a parasite inside of the blood of the dog and it will get them super sick at times. So it's really important to protect them for that. For me, whenever I start a new travel and I go places I don't know, I, I get a new Seresto collar, which is an anti-flea, anti-tick, anti-scent fleas collar. And I'm hoping that that will do the trick. Tip number five, create a safe space for them. Create a space for your dog that's just for your dog. Under the bed, I made a little dog house, which was big enough for two dogs to fit. And it's a cute little nook. It has their toys, it has their blankets, and my dogs really like to go in there. They're most of the time I put them on the bed with me, but in the evenings or if we've been walking around and we get home, they have something to drink and they usually go into their little uh, house on the bed and they rest there. And they really like this nook. Especially my first dog, Durak, she really liked getting into these little places, little spaces that is just for her, just for her to sit, where you can't step on her, where you can't, you know, where she just can sit there without that many things happening around her. She really loved that. So I made this little um, doghouse for them and I really like that they really appreciate it so much. 
Tip number six. Check your pack and your van for ticks. Check your bed and your your van for ticks. Ticks, when you go on walks, ticks are all everywhere in, in Europe. They get on your dog and they can come off. My dogs are treated for ticks. Hopefully the ticks won't hold. But I have had ticks crawl on me inside the van, so not even outside the van. So it's super important to check everything that there's no ticks and they cannot lash on you. Like, I think everyone knows ticks can carry Lyme disease and Lyme disease is something you do not want to get. It's not a fun thing to have. If you do get bitten by a tick, take it out as fast as possible and draw a little line around the place that you were bitten and you can keep an eye on the spot if it gets in infected or if it if it gets a big red ring around it go to the doctors immediately you might even want to um, call your doctor for advice if you've been bitten by a tick i do know in in the netherlands if you get bitten by a tick and you take it out you can send it to a laboratory and they can research if it has lyme disease so you know if you're at higher risk or not i don't know what that's like in different countries Tip number seven, plan ahead when needing to leave the dogs on their own in the van. When you do your van build, keep in mind that you might need to leave your dogs in the van unattended sometimes in different temperatures. For instance, my van is insulated with Armaflex with 19 millimeters on the wall and 21 or 25 millimeters on the ceiling. I have to look it up but at least it's a very thick insulation on the ceiling. I have a Max Airfan and I have this window that can open, plus I can open the windows in the front for a little bit, which can create a cross breeze. This is really important if I need to leave them in the van and it's a little bit warmer for a short period of time. Now, I do not recommend leaving your dogs in the van for longer periods of time if it can be avoided. If you need to do grocery shopping or if you need to go somewhere and they're not allowed to go in, then it's really important that you have a safe, comfortable space for them. A car, a normal car, can heat up super fast, which can get to dangerous situations because dogs do not sweat. They need to lose their warmth um, through their mouth and their paws. If the air around them gets too warm, they cannot lose their warmth and they heat up and they can actually die from overheating, which is a very tricky thing. So in my van, luckily, if I keep the curtain closed to the front and if I have a cross breeze in the van, it can, it can stay quite cool, but it's always the outside temperature. So if it's too warm outside, I can leave them inside. I do really notice a difference between a car that has windows all around or a very well insulated van that has a max air fan and an open window to create a cross breeze. But still, you have to keep in mind. So in, for instance, if I want to go grocery shopping, I do it in mornings or in the evenings when, and I park in the shade. So this prevents the, the van from heating up too much. There's also always the option of tying your dog outside of a supermarket, but I would not recommend that because dogs get stolen all the time. But let's not get too pessimistic because that's not going to happen. But it's dangerous to keep your dog outside of a store. And for me as a solo traveler, I need to think of these things. They are my companions. They are with me. I need to keep them safe. And I need to make sure that if I want to do grocery shopping, I park them in the shade and in the mornings. On the other hand, you can also have colder weather, and I for personally prefer colder weather with dogs because it's easier to keep them warm. I have jackets, I have raincoats, I have blankets that I can put them in, and I also have a fantastic heater. I just got a new one because the other one broke. But the heater keeps it very comfortable here, and that's very nice for the dogs. I personally think that keeping them warm in colder weather is easier than keeping them colder in warmer weather. Also, for warmer weather, I carry cold packs, which are these uh, little blankets that you lay on the floor and they get cold when the dogs lay on it. Now, they haven't really figured out how it works yet, but I sit with them and I tell them to lay down on it so that their body can get a little bit more cooler if needed. Tip number eight, research if your dog breed is allowed in the country. Another really important rule to check in different countries when you're going there is if your type of dog is allowed to enter the country and if you need certain paperwork for it to enter the country. I have a Pumchi, which is a Pomeranian Chihuahua mix, and a Boomer, who is a Shih Tzu 
Maltese mix, and I don't have to worry about any of these things. They are small companion dogs. They are basically allowed in every country, so I don't really need to figure this out. But if you carry high-risk dogs, for instance, a pit bull or a bull mastiff or some kind of dog like that, you have to figure out if you're allowed to take the dog in the country, if it needs to be muzzled, and if it needs to have certain paperwork. If the dog is not used to having a muzzle and you're going to a warmer country and it needs to breathe out of its mouth to cool down and is going to be stressed by the muzzle, please maybe reconsider not taking your dog on this trip. But that's personal for everybody. But there are certain countries that certain types of dogs are not allowed and it's super um, important to research this before you go. Tip number nine. Keep in mind, not all campgrounds accept dogs. Not all campgrounds allow dogs, uh, or they allow a maximum amount of dogs. For the people that are newer, I recently lost my first dog, so I had three dogs when I started doing van life. I now have two. And I've actually encountered this when I was traveling in uh, Svachwald in Blackwood in Germany two years ago. It, I had the tiny van and it started raining and I needed to get shelter in a house. So I was... Uh, talking to people on Airbnb and some people were like no three dogs is too many and luckily this wonderful person did give us uh, some shelter and afterwards she said uh, your dogs are very well behaved and she actually wrote that in my review that, that I have three dogs but they're tiny and you don't even notice them that's really important to think about my van is self-sufficient so I use camper spaces that you can stay for free or I stay in the woods but if I would need to go to a campsite for whatever reason, it's very important that I check if I'm allowed to have my two dogs there. Also, a thing to think about is that they usually charge an amount per dog, so it adds to the cost of the campsite. Tip number 10. Keep training with your dogs while on the road. They are an awesome alarm. My dogs, even though they're tiny, they wake me up at every sound that they don't know what it is. Now we're working on that because it's now turning into an alarm I don't need all the time. So for instance, if we're at campsites and there's more people here and there's other dogs, they tend to <laughs> guard the van. So we're still training on that and making it more comfortable for them. There's this tiny window that I like to keep open for a cross breeze, but the other hand, if they're on the bed, they can look out and guard the van when they see stuff they don't like. So my tip would be dogs being um, guarding is awesome, but also train them to stop barking if not needed, which we're working on. It's a tip. We're working on it because it can be annoying for other campers if your dogs are barking all the time. Well, you guys, I hope this video was very useful to you guys. Research everything before you go, but most of all, have tons of fun with your pets while traveling. I love being on the road with my dogs. They are my really companions. I, we cuddle at night, we have fun, we go on walks, they make me laugh. I, Because I'm traveling with dogs, I meet a lot of other people because dogs are like an icebreaker. Especially my cute dogs, people like to pet them and talk to me about them. So that's really cute. And I really love being with dogs. Um, so if you take all of these little tips um, to mind, being with a dog in a van in different countries doesn't have to be a hassle. It's just a thing you need to think about. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, don't forget to say yes to new adventures.